When you hear Siberia, you probably think of tough life, snow, and constant struggle for surviving. You imagine babushkas singing songs with their accordions and troika of horses blowing the snow. But let's see non-stereotypical Siberia. Welcome to the fourth largest city in Russia, Yekaterinburg. I had 24 hours to see how's the most modern city in Russia living. The atmosphere here is best described by the phrase neither Europe nor Asia. The city on the border of two parts of the world takes the best from each. With population counting 1.4 million citizens, it's located 30 kilometers away from borders of Europe and Asia. It's curious that from Yekaterinburg it's faster to get to Kazakhstan than to Moscow. Yekaterinburg is also the first stop on Trans-Siberian Railroad. So if you plan to take it someday, you'll probably begin Siberian journey from here. It was exclusively industrial city. Like for example neighboring Chelyabinsk and such factories like Uralmash were known throughout the country. But today the situation has changed. Yekaterinburg is often referred to as the third capital of Russia, as well as the window to Asia. The city is home to a truly impressive skyline featuring the most northern skyscraper called Vysotsky Center. According to Forbes, Yekaterinburg is in the list of the 30 best cities for business, and the largest companies include UMMC and Russian Copper Company. I was impressed with the new headquarters building by Norman Foster Architects. RCC is one of the world's leading producers of copper, and the building's triangulated elements draw inspiration from the crystal lattice of copper, said Foster. Inside, the offices are divided into two-tier modules. You can find museum, conference hall, and public spaces, even kitchens for stuff. In addition, a fully automated life support system is installed here, which is controlled by an intelligent grid. You should see it at the sunset. It's just unbelievable. But wait, how did such a distant city grow so well? Since the Soviet period, when it was called Sverdlovsk, the city turned into a powerful industrial center and became the most compact city in the world. Look, 1920s. The Soviets are building their happy future and the first heavy metal factory in the USSR is built, Ural Mash. Protected from all the sides by the Ural Mountains, which are rich for minerals and precious stones, it was an ideal city for industry. And the construction was taken seriously, with almost a complete destruction of the past. Just look at all of this propagandistic footage. It looks so promising and so utopian. Did people really want to move there, or were they forced to by the system of gulags? Let's see what locals thought about the city back in the USSR. Ну не совсем. Если честно. Нет, не совсем. А почему нам нравится? Ну, несколько общих впечатлений такое. Не хотелось бы из этого вообще города уехать, вот так. Ну, если честно, у меня нет большого желания здесь оставаться. Мы снимаем фильм о городе. Скажите, вам нравится наш город? город? Честно. Ну не совсем. Почему? Очень много сносится старых мест. Памятно. И вам, вам они дороги есть? From these days, Yekaterinburg got the famous constructivist architecture, simple and very ideological, like the water tower with panoramic viewpoint or the house commune with open rooftop. Yekaterinburg is also hometown of the first Russian president, Boris Yeltsin. In 1991, he even selected the city as a temporary reserve capital for the Russian Federation, in the event that Moscow became too dangerous for the Russian government. Now I see where the name the third capital of Russia comes from. There is a museum of Yeltsin in Yekaterinburg, which people find too controversial. Why? As they try to present 90s like a rocking awesome time for the people. Yeltsin was born in Yekaterinburg and definitely has changed our country, brought a lot to democracy. 
but many people think that 90s were unbearable time of gangs and unfair markets. So truly not as easy as it may seem. The building itself is a public space and inside you'll find an apart hotel with a presidential seat, restaurants, movie club, co-working, art galleries and etc. And what do people think about Yekaterinburg today? I liked it. I like it a lot more than I like Moscow. You see, Yekaterinburg is about the mix of the modern and the past. Just behind me, look at this skyscraper named Vysotsky. And just in front of it, a little wooden house. Here, people are not afraid of this like mind-blowing effect of old and new and how they can cross and create the new spaces and the new feelings. That's why I really enjoy being here. Thanks, the most modern city in Russia. And hope to see you again.